Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, today we're going to discuss further into differential equations and now look further into the other models for population growth video series and this time go over the uh, model that uh, accounts for seasonal growth and look at example one of that uh, seasonal growth model and look at part A of this example and uh, this, this example is in two parts, parts A and B and I'll go over part B in the next video so stay tuned for that. So let's just dive right in. The example states, in a seasonal growth model, a periodic function of time is introduced to account for seasonal variations in the rate of growth. Such variations could account for, for example, uh, be caused by seasonal uh, changes in the, avail in the availability of food. So you have more food, chances are its population grows faster for bacteria or for humans or etc. And this uh, other seasonal changes could be again by the season of the year for example fall winter summer it's going to have different uh, food availability or different um, yeah then that will that might affect the growth rate as well so let's look at a um, example of that model so part a states find the solution of the seasonal growth model over here this one is dp over dt where p is the population t is the time and then this equals to k that's the proportionality constant, K times P times, now we have this periodic function of time, and this is a periodic one, it's usually a trigonomic function, like this one, cosine times RT minus, uh, this one is phi, that's a Greek symbol, phi usually used for angles, and then uh, where we are given the initial population P at time is zero equals to P naught, or P zero, P subscript zero, etc. So where these uh, constants, uh, so where these symbols k, r, and phi are positive constants. Let's keep that in mind. And then part b involves graphing these for different values and looking at the limit as t parts infinity. We'll go over that in the next video. So let's find the solution to this. So from looking at this, as I went over my earlier videos, this is a separable equation. You can separate all of the um, all of the terms with one symbol like P on the left side and all of the symbols with T on the right side. So what we can do, so I'll just write this down. So DP over DT equals two, let's just write this down, this equals K P times cosine RT minus phi. So that's that over there. So we can move the P on this side when we do that and then remove the uh, dt onto this side so we have all the p's on one side. So, and again, uh, you can learn more about separable equations in my earlier videos, but the link's below. You could uh, watch out and see how this is done, the methodology. So you move that over, we get now dp over p equals to k cosine rt minus phi and then dt. So we have all the t's, there's a t fat, a term, there's a dt, and all the p's are on the other side. So the only ones that are variables are the t and uh, p variables. So now that we have this, we can just take the integral of both sides. And then the integral on the left side, that just equals to, well, ln of absolute value of p. And you always have to add a constant, we'll call it constant of integration c1, because we're going to have one on the right side. Now the integral, this this is just a constant that you could, doesn't change anything, so that's just equals to k. And now the integral of cosine rt minus phi, well, this is the integral of cosine is sine, recall this, is sine rt minus phi, but we have to account for chain rule, so we have to divide by r. Because if you were to take the derivative sine rt minus phi, this will just be cosine rt minus phi, then chain rule times it by r, so we have to divide by r. And then we have to add a constant of integration, C2. Now, uh, we can simplify this further. Well, first of all, we are uh, interested We are interested in growth and not uh, decline or anything. Interested in growth, I'll put that in quotation mark. So when we have this, uh, this absolute value of sine of uh, P, well, well, all we need to know is, well, we only want to account for when population is greater than zero and not some negative uh, population. Yeah, which in this example doesn't make sense. So we will assume P is greater than zero, the population greater than zero. So then what we end up having, let's put this like that. So what we end up having, and also I'm going to move the C1 onto the other side and then subtract it from C2 and combine. 
So what we get is this ln p, because we're only accounting for p is greater than zero, so we can remove the absolute value sign. This equals two, and move the c1 on the other side. k over r sine rt minus phi, and then plus c. And what I'm gonna do here is where c is just equal to c2 minus c1, that just equals to a constant. So subtraction of constants is still a constant. So we have that. And now before we go further, we can just solve for c, because c is already separate by itself, so it's better just to start from there. So we can solve for c by knowing that p0 equals to p0, or at initial, or at the initial population, I'll put that at sign, equals to ln p0 equals to k over r sine of now r0, that's just going to be 0 minus phi, that's just minus phi, plus c, like that. Yeah, now if you recall my earlier video, I went over the trig identity, basically if you look at the graph here, x, this is y, I'll just write recall, and I'll put the proof of this in the video link below. Basically, the graph for sine looks something like this, and I'll put this is sine of x, I'll just put sine x like that. So, anyways, so that's sine of x, the function, but now if you look at the negative side of it, so this negative side, yeah, for example, if you were to go out here, this is pi over two, negative pi over two is over here, and this one here is a negative one. So we go from negative one, this one is one here. So if you had a negative, uh, of, if, so if you put this negative in there, so at pi over two, uh, what we have is sine uh, negative pi over two, so it equals to sine negative pi over two at this pi over two. So in other words, we're basically flipping it. This is just a quick recap. So then this would be right here, sine of negative uh, negative x. Because basically at sine uh, at pi over two, we go from here and then it equals to sine negative pi over two, which is negative one. So we go down here and it basically the way it looks like is this. And as you can see here, this just equals to negative sine of x. Yeah, and this is just an odd function so that the, uh, the left side of it, instead of mirroring, it just flips it down. So that's what this equals to and you can see more about this in the video link below on the proof of that further down uh, yeah, in further detail. So um, what we have now, we could plug that in just to simplify this, get rid of that negative sign. So we have ln of um, uh, p0 equals to k over r, I'll put a negative now. So it equals to negative k over r sine, let's go back here, whoops. Yeah, I don't know why it's not moving. So anyway, so this negative, put that out of there and this is just negative sine phi plus c. And now we could simplify and get c is equal to, move this over on the other side, ln p0 plus k over r sine uh, phi. So there is our c. So now we could plug this all together and what we end up having is this ln p like that. Uh, this one is gonna be equal, let's put the c in there. So let's just write this down. So we get ln p equals to k over r of uh, sine uh, sine rt minus phi. Let me just see if I wrote that right here. So rt minus phi, then plus c. Plus c where it's ln p zero plus k over r sine phi. And now what we could do is simplify this further by moving this ln PO onto this side. So we subtract it and then recall my earlier video on logarithmic properties. We have ln P, when you have a, a subtraction, the same as dividing. So this is ln P minus ln P of zero is the same thing as ln P over P zero. So we have that. This equals to now what we have when we could factor out this K over R. So we write K over R, it's the same thing on both sides. So k over r, and then we have the sine rt minus phi plus sine phi. Yeah, so we have this. Now we could uh, solve for p uh, uh, by itself, the population, by taking the making making them both as a 
power of e. So we do that and then recall another logarithmic property the e and ln cancels. So what we end up getting is this p over p0 is equal to e to the k over r. And then we have the sine rt minus phi. Write this a bit uh, neater. Plus sine uh, phi. So that's what it equals to. And now here I'll just simplify this, move this PO onto this side, and just erase this to save time. So PT equals to P0. And just write that at P of T. And then circle this. And there is our solution. Yeah, and yeah, that's uh, the solution to that seasonal growth differential equation population growth model. And uh, yeah, so it has this time factor that's periodic, goes up and down, or just changes. And uh, yeah, that's all for today. Hopefully you follow through this pretty interesting um, uh, derivation of the solution to it. And in part B, I'll go over, I mean, in my next video, I'll do part B, which is going over by graphing, the, I'll just read it by graphing the solution for several values of kr and phi, explain how the values of kr and phi affect the solution, and it says, what can you say about the limit as t approaches infinity of p of t of the population? So yes, yeah, stay tuned for that, that'll be interesting as well. Anyways, that's all for today, if you learn, like always, you can download these exact notes in the link below, and uh, stay tuned for another math easy solution.